There are plenty of standards in this hobby, some by the book rules, some technical no-nos, but sometimes you'll find that those rules can be broken. Not every time and not every rule, but sometimes, just sometimes, you can do whatever you want. Let's go. Hey guys, I'm doing something a little different in this video, so if you can spot this subtle change, uh, let me know in the comments below, it'll really help me out. If this is your first time here, my name is Kev from CavemanAquatics.com. Make sure you go check out that website and don't forget to subscribe and you won't miss any new content. So I've gotten a lot of questions and even some negative feedback on why I keep Gordo in this tank with my African cichlids. If you don't know who Gordo is, he's my big fat 10 year old blood parrot right here. And being that blood parrots are Central American fish, they're not supposed to be kept with Africans. The technical reason is because they live in different water parameters. African cichlids live in the African rift lakes, which are much more brackish water, a little bit more saltier. Their pH is higher, somewhere around 7.8 to 8.5. While Central American fish live in softer water, much more acidic water, with a pH level somewhere around 6.5 to 7.0. Not only that, but their temperaments are different. African cichlids, as we all know, can be very aggressive fish, while Central American fish, typically blood parrots, are kind of quiet, shy, lonely, they keep to themselves. Well, I wanted to let you guys know that obviously it can be done, even though the rules say that you can't. But I wanted to share my specific circumstances of how I was able to make this work, because this won't work every time. Years ago, when I got back into the hobby after my goldfish in a bowl trials, I started out with a nice little 20 gallon tank and Gordo here was one of the very first original fish that I had. I had a mix of regular community fish, some uh, angel fish, some silver dollars, some tetras, just regular fish that you find at your local fish store. As I expanded in the hobby with tank upgrades and more fish, Gordo here got nice and big and strong. So one day I decided to buy this awesome 48 gallon bow front tank. Some of you have seen that tank in my previous videos on the channel. And when I go pick up the tank from the guy, he has it all broken down, ready for me to go. And I asked him, so why are you selling your tank? And he says, well, I upgraded my tanks, obviously, right? Everybody who's selling a tank used on Craigslist is because they're upgrading. This hobby always makes you want to go bigger and bigger. So he asked me if I want to see the new tank, and I said, sure. So we walked into the other room, he showed me the tank, and in this big, huge tank, I don't know how many gallons it was, he had these beautiful African cichlids. And at first glance, I was hooked. I had only seen African cichlids at my local fish store where they weren't too appealing. They were in the back of the store, hidden off in a corner, bad lighting because they're, I guess they're not beginner fish so they kept them separate from all the other fish and they never really seemed too appealing to me. But in this guy's tank, the way he had it all set up, beautiful tank, beautiful aquascape, I've never seen a tank so beautiful. So I hang out with this guy in his house talking about African cichlids for about an hour and by the end of that conversation, it was African cichlid time. So now I got this new tank and I know I can't keep these tropical community fish with African cichlids, so I gotta start getting rid of these fish. So one by one, I find new homes for all these other fish, but the one fish that I had to hold on to, my OG, Gordo right here, couldn't let him go. After doing a bunch of research on African cichlids and realizing that they needed a high pH, even though Gordo requires a lower pH, I also found some conflicting research that says that blood parrots can handle a pH of up to about 8.0. So I wanted to test this theory out for myself. So I got rid of all the other fish in the tank and I decided to hold on to Gordo and start changing the water parameters slowly and watch him carefully and make sure that everything was alright. So slowly and gradually I started to raise the pH by adding crushed coral into my tank and I kept a good eye on Gordo and made sure he was still doing okay. So if I would have just listened to the technical rules in the hobby, I would have never even tried this. But luckily I have found some conflicting evidence that said different and it intrigued me enough to want to figure it out for myself. So I went ahead and tried it. So with time, I don't remember how long it took, but I finally got the pH up to about 7.8, which is at the lower spectrum of African cichlids. And Gordo was still doing just fine. He was swimming around, he was eating well, he was his normal regular energetic self. So I was happy that he was happy. Now that I had gotten the water parameters down, the next problem to solve is the aggression levels. I knew that African cichlids are aggressive fish, while blood parrots can be kind of shy, kind of to themselves. So I decided to start off with three or four juvenile African cichlids that were much smaller than he was, and I added them to the tank. Watched them for a while, nobody bothered anybody, nobody was attacking Gordo or vice versa. It was a nice calm tank. So I decided to add three or four more. Again, I went through the process of watching everybody, keeping an eye on everything, 
Everything seemed kind of smooth. There was no problems in the tank. So naturally, I added three or four more. Eventually, I got to this point with this tank, and as you can see, everything is smooth, copacetic. So what ended up happening is, as the African cichlids grew to their adult size, so the Gordo, he got bigger and stronger, and he still remains to be much bigger and fatter than everybody else in the tank. As you can see, nobody's bugging him, he's not bugging anybody. And my guy Camo right here, he's the tank boss of the African cichlids. Now the African cichlids still have their hierarchy, and Camo is the boss. Whenever Camo decides to get into his funky mood, he'll send everybody to one side of the tank, and he wants the other side all to himself, being super selfish. Well, guess who's swimming around doing whatever they want? Gordo. Gordo doesn't care about their hierarchy. He don't care if Camel's in a bad mood. He does whatever he wants. He swims wherever he wants. He's kind of his own side boss to the tank. They don't mess with him. He don't mess with them. All good. Gordo's his own boss in his own world. So there you have it, guys. Technically, you're not supposed to mix Africans with South or Central American cichlids, but sometimes you can twist the rules a little bit and see what you can make work. Now, again, I'm going to say that this worked out for me because of my circumstances. It's not a regular thing that I would recommend that you try to do. But my point for this video is just to tell you that it can be done. My tank is not the first tank to do it either. I've seen plenty of other tanks with American and African cichlids together in the tank. Matter of fact, you should go check out Jason's video over at Primetime Aquatics. He's got a great video of some monster fish that shouldn't be together, but somehow he made it work. I'll have a link to his video in the description below. Everyone's story of how they got the stock that they do is different. So don't judge anyone just because the textbook says that this fish can't be with that fish. You never know what rules can be adjusted or even broken until you try it first. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. It helps the video a ton. And I'll see y'all in the next one.